Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hi everyone, and welcome to today's episode. I am driving in the ambulance, uh, and if you're asking, where's he going, what's he doing? <laughs> I'm. I'm driving the ambulance home because it's my only way to get home today. I wanted to get my wife, Melissa, if you don't know her name, I wanted to get my wife a newer vehicle. Um, but my car was kind of the, the one that had the better trade-in value. So um, instead of trading it in, which they offer you nothing kind of when you trade a vehicle in, I decided to sell mine privately. Melissa does not know this. That as we speak right now, uh, I have sold my car. I advertised it this morning and it sold within three hours. Guess there's a good demand for FJ Cruisers. The guy came, paid me, and uh, now I'm driving home in the Ghostbusters car because it's my only way, as I said, of getting home. Uh, and uh, after dinner tonight, I'm gonna surprise my wife. We're gonna go look at a couple vehicles and hopefully by the end of this video, we will have secured something for my missus um, and we'll have a new vehicle for her. But for now, I'm driving in essentially a clown circus car <laughs> as my daily driver just to get home and uh, definitely feel a little conspicuous. But hey, it puts smiles on faces, that's for sure. Okay, the real reason that I'm here and I'm out today <laughs> driving this is because on a live feed, I joked and I said we had such terrible service at that other car dealership that one day I'm going to go to a car dealership, I'm going to drive the Ghostbuster car, and get the lights flashing, and get some attention and buy a car. And guess what happened today? I decided that today was the day that we get Melissa a new vehicle, and so that's what's happening. Attention all salespeople, I would like to buy a vehicle. Now, although we are at St. Albert Dodge, that doesn't mean that all they sell are Dodges. So when I looked online on the website today and found the vehicle that Melissa wanted that had just been traded in, I knew what I had to do. I had to come down and get Melissa this, a Volvo Inscription XC90 in white nonetheless, with the panoramic roof and the whole deal, black leather interior. So this will be my lucky lady's new ride um, just as soon as I get back inside and fill out some paperwork. It's the next day. Uh, Melissa is aware of what we've been up to. In fact, I, I took her with me the other day <laughs> um, to go look at it, but the car isn't actually at home yet. They're gonna detail and clean it and they're gonna come pick it up. Uh, well, they're gonna come get me from work here today and then uh, I get to drive her car home for her. But the kids have not seen it and we'll do that big reveal. Um, the one thing I forgot to mention is that the ambulance was extra embarrassing for Melissa last night and she always forgets we're in it and people wave and smile and honk and she's like, what's their problem? And I'm like, we're in a Ghostbusters car. That's the problem. Uh, but Stephen and I had a little free time the other day. So we put these green flashing lights that go onto your valve stem. And so when the wheel turns at night, um, the wheel glows green. And so uh, all the way home, uh, we had green glowing wheels on this Ghostbusters ambulance car driving home. Not the most uh, nondescript vehicle to be driving around in. But uh, that said, that is what we took to the car lot <laughs> uh, to purchase her new car with. And um, yeah, so that actually did happen. I was joking about it on a live feed and we made it come true. Um, that said though, I did uh, get a customer come through and they brought in a bunch of antiques. We're gonna point the camera around and see what came in today. So here we are. Boxes full of estate stuff that was dropped off not more than an hour ago while I was arranging getting um, Melissa's vehicle all sorted out. Got that figured out. Um, so going through some of this stuff, I see there's some silverware. Now, um, silverware isn't really worth a heck of a whole lot unless it's made of silver. Unless, well, Unless you have a friend named Josh who does art with spoons and forks and knives, then you can probably pass some of that stuff along to him. 
That's gold plated. I mean, somebody probably collect that just because it's gold plate. Um, I don't get into a whole lot of uh, silverware for that reason because mostly it's plated and not worth a whole bunch. Uh, but this appears to be 925, so that's solid silver, this bracelet. Uh, so there might be some, some actual silver in here, and in which case it might have uh, value as silver weight. So I'll have to dig through that a little bit more thoroughly later on. It was an odd variety of stuff that came in today. Everything from records, some, uh, some good blues, John Mayall, Bobby Hackett, you know, they got some uh, Mo Kaufman, so some jazz. Uh, so a few interesting little records here. Oh, we'll keep those aside. 33 RPMs of this size of album are the easiest ones to sell. You get the 45s too, and um, they're fairly collectible, but ones people are after are these big guys here, because if you remember working at 45, there's only one song per side, so you'd have to flip the darn thing over, which could be super distracting, but uh, let's see. Jewelry, just when I thought I was out of jewelry, in comes some more. A lot of this looks like it's fashion jewelry. I might have to check and see some of this may, in fact, have some gold in it. Uh, it's a little assortment of vintage ladies' wristwatches. These would be considered like a cocktail size watch. But, uh, let's see. 1939 from Mother and Mary. And that's Burke's. That would be an expensive uh, brand. Sometimes these can be... Um, uh, Tiso or Omega um, that have it just has a movement inside and then the company the store would label it Burks some fashion rings and cufflings uh, some assorted other rings that looks like it's an antique silver costume jewelry ring with the sort of adjustable uh, piece on there so it could fit almost any size finger so I will have to go through all this oh look here's a fun one right here an antique brooch but look it's a spider that's neat for costume jewelry because that wouldn't have been your, not your average lady would have decided to go and buy a costume jewelry spider. But what a, I guarantee this thing sells. In my experience, the weirder it is, the faster it is to sell. And something like a uh, spider brooch should be a pretty quick sale. Now, uh, there was more than this. Oh, look, somebody was, somebody was into curling. Mixed clubly, that's a curling rock on that. Some little pins can be quite collectible too. Little trinkets and souvenirs from vacations long past the 1930s. But sometimes you can find uh, military badges and military pins that are from around the same era. Uh, see some silver, silver cowboy hat earrings. <laughs> okay, well that's um, bin number one. There's a whole other bin here, too. And more bangles and more earrings and so forth. Crystal wrap bracelets, beaded bracelets, costume jewelry, and the like. So this will have to be taken home and sorted and organized, and we'll get this out for sale. Get it off and on its way. But it is fun to go through these uh, little assortments of jewelry. This is a manageable amount of jewelry. Not like what I've been dealing with lately. Okay, what's in the bag? Inside the bag, she said, were some old newspapers. So let's see. Oh yeah, the JFK Memorial Life. Oh, Calgary Herald from when uh, Kennedy was assassinated. And that must be just the sports insert from that. A lot of people at that time, it was such a, you know, historic event that many people kept the uh, newspapers from that day. And um, as a result, there's a lot of newspapers out there that are feature um, Kennedy and the assassination. And uh, you can kind of see how it went through the, the press and how they, you know, thought different things of what was happening. Highlights of the Warren Commission. So somebody was a fan. I mean, JFK was kind of like a celebrity at the time. And so for him to uh, have been uh, slain like that, it affected everybody. And of course, even us in Canada here, there's people who collected JFK stuff, just like people collect royal artifacts. Um, there's a few pieces that were sitting out that were kind of cool. This is a 1967 Centennial stamp set with a box. Um, it's every set from Canada from 1967. Uh, and then there's 
room in there to put more stamps. Uh, big old thermos, which will last a lifetime with the uh, red um, plastic or almost Bakelite top. This is an older one. Probably, you know, this is your uh, working on the uh, steel beams of a New York skyscraper kind of thing. Mind you, you wouldn't want to drop that off the, the edge. You see those guys sitting on the skyscraper beams and they're just having their lunch up there. Uh, then you think, boy, I wonder if he dropped like something. That would not be great for whoever's standing below, but really um, robust old thermoses like this. Not overly valuable, maybe like in the $40, $50 kind of range because it's still usable. But uh, what, a, what a great thing to have on a picnic if you want to have that retro sort of picnic. Uh, this, at first I thought, well, why is there a t-shirt here? And then I noticed that it's a t-shirt from the John Entwistle Band. And they've got the uh, guitar with the tour dates on it. He's got spiders all over it. And uh, this, is, this is an original rock t-shirt from 1988. So, of course, uh, John Entwistle, big rock and roller from back in the day. Of co course, uh, John was most famous for being a member of The Who and went off and did solo tours and, and so forth down the road as a bass player. But really cool to find old rock t-shirts. Those are always collectible. And some can be worth hundreds, uh, if not thousands of dollars for the right one. There are uh, people who collect them. In fact, our sign painter, Rock and Roll Dave, um, our sign painter, Dave, who does the uh, murals on the outside of our building, buys and sells old rock concert t-shirts. So I could probably reach out to him. Um, this is a uh, handmade kangaroo. And it's out of um, some sort of... Uh, plated metal. Uh, I don't know if it's copper or what, but it's, it's an artist made. It's got a little signature stamp on it, on a stone base. Curiosity, you know, kind of neat. Calgary Stampede dollar set. So these would be, let's see, these are all commemorating the Calgary Stampede, which of course is a big deal in the Horse, uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say the horse community. You know, the horses. The horses like the stampede. I don't think the horses like the stampede, but um, the stampede has been a big thing with roping and events, uh, part of Calgary's history for many, many years. Uh, so a nice commemorative set like that of stampede dollars. Pretty cool. And nice that the whole set's in there with its original card. Uh, here we have a nice little bus statue of... Hermes, 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 I can never remember how to say it correctly, but um, nice little piece. It's an alabaster. So kind of like that white stone-like finish. Uh, what's in the case? There we go, 45. So I was talking about 45 RPM records before. This would be your kit. This, would, this is your go-to party case right here. This would be, I'm going to bring my favorite songs to my friend's house and we're going to sit around and listen to music. This is what you did. You brought your, oh look, there's this, the Calgary Stampede record right there. I've had and sold that before. Oh, well, somebody was obviously a fan of the Cowboys. But uh, let's see, Surf and Safari. Let's see, what did this person take when they went over to their friend's place? They took Elvis, they took the Beach Boys, Route 66, all kinds of fun stuff. So lots of fun records and it sounds like there's a, a party in the box they're just waiting to happen but aside from the records uh this little box of course you open up what's inside a nice old remington portable typewriter in fantastic looking condition with the uh enameled um buttons on it keys i should say great little piece and it's the noises portable so it, noiseless quote unquote you can still hear it but it's a lot more um, silent than what the average typewriter was. So this would have been something that you would have used in a uh, more of a uh, an office setting where you wouldn't want to drive the people sitting next to you absolutely crazy. Just a little bit crazy. But nice to find it in such good shape and especially nice to find it with the case like that too. Okay, on to another box here. Let's see what's inside. Open it up. It looks like a suitcase, but in fact, that's a little radio, a little Philco. I'm going to plug it in and see if it works. I don't think this is a battery operated. Although I don't see a spot for the um, cord to come out. I might have to uh, loosen those off. This might have been an actual portable radio that you'd have to uh, put a battery in, carry it around to the beach or so forth. But what a cool looking little piece. What else is in the box? Well, this is a uh, slide viewer. 
So you had the old fashioned slides, you would put one in the top there and look through the little viewfinder and be able to view your slides. Kind of like a view master for your own family vacation. So just when you thought Uncle Pete couldn't go on about his trip to Hawaii in 1965 anymore, he'd give you this and go, all right, here, it's way better if you see it in person for yourself and you'd stick this on your noggin and look at pictures of other people's fun times and vacations. Um, cute little travel iron. What I like about it, it's got the, it's in the box there. It's a little folding travel iron, but look at this cute little case. This is how it was sold. It's the original box and it's meant to look like a little suitcase. Who keeps the box for something like this? Who keeps the box for an old travel iron? But it's cool because of the box, not because of the iron itself. Neat little piece. Um, early autograph books. This was a big thing back in the day. 1962. They'd write little stories and messages, friends. Now the other thing that came in today was this. It's an antique fox hunting horn. Like, you know, for fox hunting, like people do. Fancy people in red pants on horses, like you see in Disney cartoons. Anyway, those people would have had this. How do you blow it? I don't really know. I'm going to try. I think you kind of got to get your lips shaking all around, like Barney Gumble having a burp, and then it'll make a sound. Nope. <laughs> Dizzy Gillespie, I am not. Uh, sounds like I stepped on a chicken. Um, anyway, a proper person of noble status and not me who is um, Barney Gumble stepping on a chicken could make this thing sound better. But it is nice to see some earlier stuff coming through. And this would date back to the late 1800s. Still in good shape too. Surprising what people have kicking around. Um, and also... And you don't see me buying furniture very often. I picked up a couple pieces of furniture too, but just because they were so cool. I'll show you. The other day I posted on my Facebook page, if anybody could help me find the marks. And I think it was Yakamoto, if I'm not mistaken, it's a Japanese Amari Ware um, charger. Well, I was just say it's bigger than a charger. It's like 30 inches across, it's massive. Um, well, maybe not 30, eh, probably close to 30 inches. It's pretty darn big. Um, that came in and this, oh, look, I already found a spot for our little Australian buddy up there. The little kangaroo has found a home on top of this 1800s Welsh dresser. Now it's not a dresser in the sense that you put clothes in, but they called it a dresser. Um, but it would be more for putting your fancy plates and dishes on and, um, more of a sideboard or hutch that we would know nowadays. But, um, nice to find some early furniture like that. And somewhere at the back of the shop, is let's see past the motorcycle around the corner uh there was this this is quite old actually um this desk would date back to probably the early to mid 1800s it's a banker's desk and it's labeled as such on the back um it's english made and because you were so proud of your furniture back, you know, furniture makers back in the old days, there we go, right there. John Sharp and Company, house furnishers and bank fitters. And uh, you can see that's actually, uh, it feels like it's almost ivory, that plaque that it's on. And it stayed there all those years. And I think this is the original leather top with these little rose sort of rose imprints all around it. This um, probably was a really bright red at one time and over the years has faded, but you can imagine, you know, being seated across or, or somebody working at this desk and um, coming, you know, we're doing ledgers or perhaps, you know, um, writing loans for people to take their first trip across the ocean to the new world. Who knows what happened at this desk? Or it could have been used for something really boring, like, you know, taxes for years. Either way, it's a super cool early piece. A lot of times these handles get switched out. Um, you can see it's uh, dovetail or box cut sort of um, detail. And, you know, you can always tell if uh, what age piece of furniture is based on the type of wood that they use. You know, this is not ply. It's not chipboard, obviously. It's all solid wood. And uh, right, I have to check my skeleton keys to see if I have a key that might work in that. And every single drawer locks. So likely a piece that was used in a public setting so you could lock each and every drawer because you know, want to make sure it's safe and secure. 
Uh, the other piece that was cool, oh, there's my Pepsi machine. There's the pinball machine I picked up the other day. It's just about working. Uh, was this. This is a uh, likely a mid to late 1700s Georgian bureau. Um, so the idea was you'd pull these little side rests out here. Your desk surface would sit on them and uh, you'd have this little desk. Now, sometimes there's secret pockets. The felting is in terrible shape that needs to be refelted. It is fairly original to the piece, but you can see it's quite worn after you know hundreds of years of use. But again, beautiful cut piece of furniture. Um, it's had years of repairs. You can see that this keyhole um, for locking has been moved a couple times to make it work, but it looks like it still lines up. Again, didn't get the key with it, but what a cool old piece of furniture. Anyway, I'm not going to get myself lost in furniture here. I am going to get back to those boxes and see what I missed. There are some more coins. These are all stampede souvenir dollars. But there were these little cards in here, which I hadn't seen before. They're all cars. And you look at the back, gallery of great cars. And they're from BA, which is British American Oil. That blue and orange would date these to about 1969. The reason I know that is that BA got bought out by Golf. Golf's colors were orange and blue. They didn't transition over to the Golf uh, name until the next year. So they had a year uh, of so crossover in the late 60s where they had the BA logo, but in the Golf colors, so people would recognize um, what the name was. Really cool little set and really cool cars. And Oh, it's taunting me. One of my favorite cars right there, the Jag XKE, with Enzo Ferrari himself, called one of the most beautiful cars ever designed. Jag SS. Oh, there's two of those. So it says there's 26 in a set. I'll have to see, or 24 in a set. I'll have to see how close I am to having a whole set. But these would cross over to Card Collector. This is a triple threat. Card Collector, Car Automobile Collector, or Gas Station Memorabilia Collector would all be interested in it. And oftentimes that's the same person collects all three. So pretty cool little finds. Some of these autograph books look a little older than the other. The first one, oh yeah, look at that. 1929 with a nice little drawing in there. Somebody was a budding artist. So maybe you come across a few that have little drawings in the mix. This is somebody's poems. When the golden sun is sinking, sinking in the west. And of true pals you are thinking, think of me among the rest. Your loving um, guide sister, Jane. So it must have been girl guides, perhaps. So a little snapshot into the 1920s with all these. Uh, look at this. Yield not to flirtation, for flirting is sin. Wow. Interesting. So the, the, the time in the life of somebody back in the 1920s and 30s, captured here in these little books and they've got these nice little drawings <laughs> and it's funny you know you just never know what uh somebody's gonna have in these little things it's it's not quite like a diary but in a way it is it's interesting to see how people lived their life back then what's in here oh another boston chalkware figure i had a whole pile of those go through at the last auction sale that we got from uh from uh madam rack's house and now they're coming back to haunt me again <laughs> In this box we have, this is actually just a lock box, you know. I should go put this by the banker's desk, make it a little set there. But this uh, key, this is what you take, actually if you did farmer's market sales or something, you could still use that as a lock box nowadays to put your cash in. A uh, little rose, another one of those stamp sets from the 60s. Coin sets from the Commonwealth Games. Just a, a little variety of stuff, really. Looks like more, but another iron, yeah, another iron in the box. Oh, pretty wide little variety of stuff. The trick is now, you gotta put it all away. I nearly forgot, before I got distracted by everything, that there was still another box here of stuff. Um, this unique little tool is uh, meant for peeling bark off of logs. If you're doing uh, log cabin builds or um, you can use it for many other things. Some people use it for um, for pelt removal and so forth, but I, this would be intended, I think, as a bark stripper for logs. Um, an antique juicer, American made. You stick your fruit in there, you squish it down real good, and then you pour it out. Look, 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 look. And there's your glass of orange juice or whatever you're gonna drink. Um, but I'm digging through this box and look, 
You know what that is? That's your come and get it triangle. I think it's spelled that K-M-O-N or C-M-O-N-D-I-T-I-T. -I -T. Come and get it. <laughs> so you rattle this all around and call everybody over for dinner. How fun that that's still uh, intact in here. What else is in this box? Oh, I, know, I recognize what this is. That's an International Order of Odd Fellows. Woo Waka Woo. Fred Flintstone style. Um, of course, uh, many lodges around the turn of the century and later. It's not as popular now, but there are still lodges around, Shriners and so forth. But that is an early... Uh, you see the, uh, the all-seeing eye, the hand with the heart on it, all these symbolism... Uh, little bits of imagery that they had. And it looks like there might actually be a couple of them in here. Yeah, somebody was uh, well, part of a teacup handle. But there's a few. Union of Plumbers and Steam and Gas Fitters. There you go. So it was a union member and they were also a lodge member. Oh, look at this. I think that's the original... Um, envelope for this i've never actually seen the uh the original envelope that they would have mailed the uh odd fellow uh pins in manufacturers importers of gold and silver lace fringe tassel stars yep that's what this is made in canada toronto well that's got some age to it and they're in fantastic shape probably because they've been in their original package this whole time and there's uh it looks like an odd fellows um maybe ring Stones are removed out of it. Interesting stuff. Oh, I'm guessing, yep, exactly. That's where that's from. It's a shame. Little handle came off of this hand-painted uh, Chinese, or Japanese, I should say, vase. But at least the, the bits are there still, so it's not beyond repair. And what else do we have? Heinzmann and Company. Oh, these are early uh, record cleaners, like really early record cleaners. When you had, uh, look at the phone number, M2480. Miller didn't even have a phone number on it. What's a phone? We sell records, but what the heck's a phone? Mystic man from the future. These are velour. These are like your record would be going and you'd let this go on top and we collect all the dust off of it. That's probably the earliest record sweeper, earliest uh, record cleaner I've probably ever come across. That's cool and interesting and different oh look there's more more odd fellow yep there they are in the original envelope those are pretty neat and collectible a little demonic looking elf baby riding a dog because you know what do you what do you want to have sitting on your shelf demonic looking elf baby riding a dog red cliff albert oh medelta potteries Medelta is a good brand for uh, people who collect it. Um, there are many collectors of Medelta. They're known for mainly Crocs, but they also did do other pottery as well. Um, this uh, looks like a fairly ornate fan. Probably not terribly old. Some opera style binoculars. A lot of times these were French, made in Paris, sometimes English made. I have to clean that up to check it out. Does it still work? Kind of. Needs a good cleaning, but yes, it still does what it's supposed to do. So, a few interesting little treasures. Um, now, the pieces that I'm going to keep back for myself at the store would be like the Rock t-shirt. Um, the uh, the BA cards, the little scrapbooks, uh, or the, the autograph books, and the Lodge medals. There was also this. A bone or horn hatchet. You can see that's bone right there. It's been turned into a hatchet with nice beadwork on it. This is the type of stuff I wouldn't mind keeping around the store. Um, things like the fruit presses and some of the costume jewelry, that's not as exciting for me. So that'll probably go off to auction. But either way, fun box full of stuff. Taking a closer look at this book, look, there's nice little drawings in here. Dear Babs from your loving chum, Mary Parker, 1930. And she drew this nice little drawing of this very stoic looking lady. Ha! Huh, might be upper crust, has her chin in the air. Uh, and I've marked these, of course, with these great little cards that I have. I'll have to make sure I don't lose those, but I wanted to show you guys because it was just so cool. There's another one. Beautiful little drawings all the time. Louise had some talent, 1930, look at that. 
nice little single line sort of drawing. There's some real talent there to do that drawing. I think it's very nicely done. And uh, there was a little, I saw this drawing and I'm like, well, this is funny. What does this say? It says, dear Babs, breathe, breathes there a man with eyes so bad he cannot read a hosiery ad. Sincerely, Jack. Well, Jack was a little bit naughty to write that in his female friend's uh, journal in 1931. <laughs> But what a what a saucy little thing to put in there. Anyway, so so cute and uh, such a neat little part of uh, uh, of history to see what people were going through and, and doing and finding funny at that time, all those years ago. And it looked like it was given 1929 at Christmas time, and she did well to fill it up with all her little notes and letters throughout the ages. I'm on my way right now uh, to the Dodge dealership, and I'm picking up Melissa's new vehicle. I'm catching an Uber, which um, is great because <laughs> I need some help, some way to get there. Uh, so let's uh, cross our fingers. Can't wait to show the kids and show Melissa what the new vehicle's like, and I hope that they wash it up and made it look great for her. It's gonna be an exciting day. Here it is, I've got the keys for Melissa's new car. I just have to get in it and drive it home. Really nicely kept, it's a couple years old, but they are giving it the work over. I'm gonna get out of your way because she's gonna come and clean the pedals off, so it's absolutely perfect. We've got our plate on it. What I really like about this model, of course, is that it has the panoramic roof. So it's a giant sunroof that goes from back to front. Anyway, once they're done cleaning it, I'll hop inside and show you guys what the interior looks like. Interior looks nice and clean. She was just giving the pedals a once over, but nice black interior. There's that big panoramic sunroof. And honestly, uh, our salesman Shane here was helping us out at St. Albert Dodge. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, and of course, I have to give a plug to the dealership because Melissa's cousin is uh, one of the co-owners at the business. So of course, we got to come down and, and give some business to the family. Uh, but Shane, we were joking because I had a bad experience at another dealership, but you've turned us around. You've you've saved us from going elsewhere. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you. So what started off as a frustrating tour of me looking at cars at other dealerships ended up here back with a family dealership and uh, with the new keys from Melissa's vehicle. So now I'm going to go pick up the kids and give them the first ride in the car. The one thing I'm not used to is this. It has like computer screens all in it. Um... That's gonna be something new to get uh, used to. <laughs> we'll figure it out, all, what all these other buttons and gadgets do. But loving that, the kids have tons of room back there. It's a pretty deluxe vehicle. I know she's gonna love it. So maybe you're asking yourself, Alex, why a Volvo? Um, Swedish folks have temperature very similar to Canada. Um, they have winters, and frankly, they know how to build a vehicle that will last through a tough winter. Excellent heaters, very safe, as everybody knows Volvo for having really great safety ratings. Um, and frankly, they're super nice. So if you're gonna get something that's um, got the class and the feel of like a Mercedes or Range Rover or something, but it's not as in your face, a Volvo is a great way to go. Um, and they hold their value pretty decently too. So all around, a good, reliable vehicle. And this is what Melissa wanted. And at the end of the day, She's going to have her butt in this seat, and I want to make sure that my lady's happy. Home at last, and here we have the old Volvo. She needs a good wash. And the new. Ba -ba -ba so now, to go get Melissa and the kids, get them to come have a look at the car. Okay. Steven is coming up behind us here. Should be open. Yep, it's open. It looks, like it looks a lot cleaner. Yeah, they did a nice job cleaning it. Oh, it smells clean. Does this go in? What? Yeah, you have to do, you can't just push it. You have to start pushing stuff. Oh my gosh. Steven, get in. Look what I found. Oh, look, it has little. Wrong side, um, wrong side. Get on the other side, look. It has little screens. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's smart. Wow, they that's go cool. right here. So what do you think? It's nice. It's what nice. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> yeah. Steven sitting up front. Yeah. So this will be the new wheels, the new family car. Ooh. Oh, I can't. I can't start it with my door open. I don't think. Can I? Oh, look. You, start press, oh, you have, you have to, to have your foot on the brake. <laughs> yeah. Just don't run me over. Why the head? Why the headlights moving? 
It does like. But there was like a red thing. Oh, see, the well, it's telling you that your door is open. Oh. It's yeah. a super high techy kind of car, so. It's nice. You'll have to get used to the computer screen in the middle. But what do you think of it, Steven? It's really nice. What do you guys think? I'll come to the back. <laughs> what do you guys think? Oh, yeah. Is there a little screen back here for you guys too? Yeah, we're trying to. Yeah. Does it, we're uh, trying to. It's not touched. They keep messing with the air conditioning. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Already, they're that. messing with your car, Mel. Well, I gotta. <laughs> Wait, how, no, that's no word. And there's still lots of room in the back too. So. So it's like if you were inside. The car. What's this? But it's much fancier it's, than Mum's old one. That's a cover that goes over the top to make it so you don't see but what's there, in the back. But there's oh. no seats in the back. Yeah, there is. Okay, watch this. There's seats. They're just folded down right now. Oh. It's just like the other car. Okay, wait. Mom do I say, hey Siri? What do I say? Oh, you just, you push the button once and talk to the car. It has like its own sort of built-in, you just push it once. Ready? Melissa is most impressed by this feature. <laughs> wait. I don't know where I went. Just wait, wait for it. What are you doing? Waving your foot around? Abracadabra. Oh, there you go. I didn't push the button. It's a foot sensor. <laughs> Ziggity zag. <laughs> but you have to remember where it was so you're not doing that little dance every time you want to open your trunk. I don't know where it is under there. Just well, a little dance. Maybe it's this. Okay, so how do you close it though? Just wait. Let me see if I can do it again. If it drops on my head. I don't know. I think you have to push the button to close it. So you don't accidentally like Yeah, I get closed in it. It's like if Darth Vader or a Stormtrooper had a baby and it would be this car. <laughs> Well, I'm not saying it's evil. I'm just saying it reminds me of a Stormtrooper car. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nifty. Yep. Excited to look. I'm glad that you're excited. It smells like car. -y. My gas is on this side. Oh. All right. Cool. I like that it has a little picture of my car. So what do you, you guys all think it's good? Do you guys all like it? Thumbs yes. up if you like the car. I like the car. Okay, good. That makes me happy. While they are all inside the car having fun, and hopefully not going on a family road trip without me, <laughs> I'm going to call it a day. So uh, another adventure, Melissa gets some new wheels, and I get her car, which badly needs to go to the car wash. Oh well, <laughs> at least uh, it all worked out for the best. So thanks for watching today's episode, guys. Had some cool stuff come in. Make sure to stay tuned for some more episodes soon. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll go for a little trip now. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye for now.